ladies and gents, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Midnight, my Kawasaki VN900 Bobber, or if you're Canadian or American, Vulcan 900. Now, as you probably saw in the previous video, if you haven't, top right hand corner now, please go have a watch. Midnight is fully complete, ready for MRT. However, after taking her out for a quick little spin around my cul de sac, the clutch started slipping. I know it's absolutely barbaric, but yes, yeah, so it's slipping. I've got to get it fixed. So, this video, as you've probably seen above, is how to change the clutch on a BN900 or Vulcan 900. So, let's crack on with that because straight after this, we are taking it for MOT. So for those who are new to the channel and haven't watched all the previous videos of Midnight, this is my Kawasaki VN900. So unfortunately the light's not actually that perfect to be able to see it properly, but this is my candy apple red black base coat bobber. And she's absolutely stunning. Like I say, I have briefly ridden her and um, yeah, it takes a little bit of getting used to with the old hate hangers, but uh, I'm not gonna go too much into it because you'll have to look at the other previous video, but just for the people that are watching this, just to learn how to do the clutch, this is my VN900, Vulcan 900 bobber. She's stunning. So as you can imagine, first things first, we have got to take off the pipes. Now, this is gonna be a very delicate procedure and I'm gonna need two people. So unfortunately, I'm gonna have to time lapse or skip to the point of it being off just because my partner doesn't like being on camera. So, pipes off. So I've moved a little bit further ahead. Um, I have taken the exhaust off as you can see and I've done a massive boo-boo and I'm not happy. Thing is, you've got to be so delicate because this is freshly done paint and me from saying the word paint, you can probably think of what I've done. Yeah, you probably guessed it. Check that out. The exhaust fell from here and caught this. And I did not notice until I was taking the air filter off. So, this video might take a bit longer because so I'm gonna have to send it off the paint now because I'm not gonna leave it like that, as you can imagine. So I know this is a how-to video, but this is kind of how my videos do go anyway. Um, so we are gonna now start cracking on with removing stuff, but I just thought I'd bring that into it as well. So, let's crack on. So now I've got the exhaust off, we're gonna take the controls off and all I can really do with this is once the controls are off, I can move it over here so I've got all this room. So don't forget when you take controls off, whether you've got, well, no matter what controls you've got on this side, remember to take the switch off. I almost nearly didn't and I broke the last one and so I got the new one. So don't forget to take that off as well. So now what we're going to do is we are going to wind back the clutch cable. You can see here. Because we're going to have to take the clutch cable off. Down here, wind it back. Off this one, just so we can take it off. Here. So we should pull that out now. Put it through here. It's gonna be easier just to take the whole thing off. All you need to do is just wind these, wind that back. So this can shoot through like so. And then what will happen is, is this you've got to get all the way off here, like so. And you pull that across. And I found with this, so it's a bit of a strange one. So you can see you've got the handle there. Pull that back on itself so it goes around all the way around like this. And once you've done that, it'll come out like that. And then you can easily just pop it off, he says, like that. There is probably one thing you're thinking, Nick, you haven't done this. It's actually two, technically. Coolant and oil. Drain them both. Because as soon as you take that side piece off, the coolant's gonna put straight out of where the, um, the water pump is and also that is full of oil so dump them both and that's what we're going to do now. There we go. The only thing is that's fresh oil. <sighs> right, okay that's coolant emptied, that's oil emptied. So the next point of call is we've got to take these two bolts out, 
these two bolts out. These two, which holds the engine to this engine mount here. And there's a bolt just here at the front. And then you can pull this off. Okay, now we've got obviously everything out of the way here. I was going to take it outside, but I've got uh, cardboard underneath because you are probably going to have some oil left in there. So with these, the last time I took it off, I didn't, uh, there wasn't an order or anything. And from looking at the manual, there's no order. But just take it a few off at a time, loosen them up, and then you just pull it off in one. So guys, the cover is now off, which is fantastic. Um, what I'd really recommend is just to do a little drawing of this and then so you can remember which obviously bolts goes where. Because as you can see from underneath, there are different sizes. So the last thing you want to do is mess them up. So I really would recommend that. So now that's done, we are going to tackle the actual clutch itself. And there's a few things um, that you need to bear in mind which we are going to go through in a minute. One of them, which we are going to do now, sorry, is you're going to take these off in a star pattern and a bit at a time, and then just take the cover off. And like I say, that's what we are going to do now. Right, so they're now off. I have put them in order again over here, the bolts and everything, which I don't think you need to worry too much about that, but rather be safe than sorry. So now it's time to take this clutch plate off, like so. Be gentle, <laughs> don't quite take it off too full force. So first of all, we wanna just take this off. So we can do that first, like so. So that's good, put that to one side. Now, this is the fundamental part we need to remember. And that is, if you can see here, you've got the line of the plate on here for these all slide in there. You've got multiple plates in this. So, but the outer one, the very last one, that looks like this, is pointing up. That is fundamental. So make sure that that is exactly the same. And also what we are going to do, we're gonna take every plate out and we're gonna put them down exactly the same as the way they went in, just so we remember, okay? It's good because I'm recording it and I can look back on this, but obviously for you guys, you can keep rewinding on this video just in case you have made a mistake. But like I say, luckily with this, if you did make a mistake, it's the last one anyway. And from looking at it, the clutch looks very, um, it's still got a bit of wear on there, but at the moment it looks pretty worn. What you're gonna need is a little picker. I haven't got that, but I have got two thick pieces of wire, so hopefully that will work. And just literally hook it in, and the side, and pull them out gently. And there we have it. So the clutch is now fully out. And from just having a quick look at this, it doesn't actually look that bad on closer inspection, if you can see. But like I say, it was badly slipping. So it wasn't slipping on low, um, low rev or low speed. It was more when I was trying to give it a little bit of a bit of a blip. <laughs> and yeah, it decided to slip. So regardless of how much they cost it's just worth changing it. it i should have done this when i was doing the whole rebuild for everyone who hasn't seen that top um right hand corner now and you'll be able to see the start of everything so if you're only watching it just to learn how to do the clutch if you want to watch this entire process of midnight getting turned into a bobber then please feel free and please hit like and please hit subscribe so guys here it is it is the ebc um srk series um heavy duty clutch so the heavy duty part is the actual clutch springs but um i've been recommended by multiple people to get this one um so inside we have whoa, we have our springs which we won't be needing just yet and inside here we have clutch plates 
and new inner metal um, ones that come individually on there. So it does say with these, you don't need to soak them overnight. However, you do need to submerge them in oil for a while. So that is why I've got my oil bit here. So they are now in there. Get some good amount of oil over them. So that's what they're gonna sit for a little bit. Like I say, with these, it's one clutch plate, one of these plates to get it all back on. So that's what we're gonna do now because you'll have more of these, these type of clutch plates than you will of these. Right, let's put them back in. So I'm gonna put a bit of oil on these. I'm not gonna um, submerge them, as in leave them in there like the others, but I'm gonna put just a little bit of oil on them. Just like that. And then they're going in. said guys the most fundamental bit don't forget to put the last one opposite to the others so it fits here pointing out not in like the other ones okay so fantastic we've now put the clutch all in wasn't so hard was it <laughs> um i spoke to you soon now aren't i <laughs> so uh right now it's literally getting ready to put the cover back on right let's get it back on So now this is where our new springs come in. Um, yeah. So they are more heavy duty than the other ones. Well, looks like they give me a spare as well, which is very kind. So let's take that one off. So this is the difference between the two. It's not much. But it's just a little bit more if you can see that so it is going to be a bit more harder i believe on the actual clutch itself so when you're pulling the lever in but like i say need a new clutch and like i say everyone i spoke to recommended this one so yeah so you get a, you get a spare one so we'll keep that for a minute So if you see, I didn't, um, I wasn't tightening them up. I didn't do them in a pattern. It's just to get the bolt in. But we are going to have to do it exactly the same as what we did last time, which was doing um, a bolt pattern. So this one, this one, this one, this one, a cross pattern, um, evenly. About it said in the book, uh, two or three um, motions to get it in, which is fine. So we can do that. So we're going to start that now. Um, so in the book, it says here, so if you haven't got one of these guys, I'd really recommend you to get one. They're not that expensive. I think this cost me about 15 quid. Um, and like I say, it is the uh, Kawasaki VR 900 Bible. <laughs> so it says it, following a cross pattern, tighten the clutch spring bolts evenly in two or three stages, which we've already done, to 9.8 newton meters. Already got it set up, so I've cheated. No, 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 let's just start here. One, two, three, four, 
five. Like I say, it doesn't feel like a lot, but it is, and considering it's only 10 mil bolts, it can't be a huge amount anyway. So there we go, we've literally changed the clutch, which wasn't that hard. Um, and I was actually tempted at one point to go to a garage to get it done. But I thought, no, you know what, I've rebuilt this bike, done everything to it so far, so let's replace the clutch. Because if I've done all that, surely I can do this. So right, the next point is just to clean up the rim, obviously for the cover. Like I said, that's what we're gonna do now. Okay, so there we go guys. I know it goes without saying, you'll probably say Nick shut up, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> but you do not want to get any of this old gasket or any sort of rubbish inside there. Like I say, I know it goes without saying, but still, just be very careful. Hence why I used it, just a bit of kitchen roll, just put around here so any crap that did fall off, it would go on top of that. So the other recommendation, yet yeah, again, the gasket get a genuine one. Um, multiple people said to me, do not get the cheap ones off eBay um, because they leak. So just go to um, Kawasaki and get a genuine one. To be fair, they're not that expensive. I think they're about 30, 40 quid um, off the top of my head. I can't quite remember, but I roughly remember it being around that sort of price. Like I say, when you're putting this gasket on, you've got these little lugs on each side. You've got one just here, and you've got one here just hidden behind the clutch. And that's it. So now it's the cover. So same with the other one. I know I'm not trying to teach you to suck eggs, but um, clean that bit off as well, because obviously you want to make a perfect seal. So if you saw the start of the video, um, I scratched the hell out of this. It has gone off and it has been repainted and it looks fantastic. And it only cost me 80 quid to do that and they had to paint the whole of it. So uh, I'm really, really chuffed with that, really happy. So yeah, now um, yeah, now it's just putting it all back on and it's already covered in fingerprints. Now we've got obviously our bolts, so we know exactly what we do. We've got our diagram. One last thing, obviously, sorry, I forgot to say. This bolt up here, you'll notice it had thread lock, Loctite, whatever you call it. In the UK, we call it Loctite. Um, so put a bit more onto that one. And that is the only one you do need to put it on because all the other ones didn't have any. All right, now we've done that. It is 9.8 newton meters again for all of these. So guys, if you're up to this point and you're literally, you followed all of this with me, you should be really proud of yourself because it does take some bottle to um, obviously work on your pride and joy like this. Because like I say, I never thought I could do it. It's just giving it a go and just having the confidence to do it. So if you have done, well done to you. So we're almost finished. All we've got to do is stick this one back on. Now this is a bit of a pig getting on because Obviously the weight of everything it's slightly off so you have to sort of play with it really and it did take me a while to get it on the first time it's always worrying about cross threading and things like that so just take your time with it don't rush it's the last thing you want to do is rush um, you know like I say we'll get there so and I'm being uber careful because I don't want to scratch that and I did originally when I put this bike together so hundred percent safe. I'm covering it up. This might work, this might not, because it might give it more tension and not being able to get it on there. So fingers crossed, everything will be okay. So now they're all pinched up, including these two, which you didn't see in that little bit just now. They are 44 newton meters. Doesn't seem like a lot, but what it says in the book, that's what it is. So these here are 
34 newton meters. So there we go. Um, I've had to move, you have to move the tank back, so all I recommend is you've got to take the controls off the top or the speedo and everything and the cover, disconnect everything and just move it back just so you can get on there. Now you can use a funnel and move it back a bit further. Oh, sorry, less further than I have. But I just prefer this because you've got to get that cap on quick once you run it up because you've got to run it up with the cap off to get the air out, shake it about a bit obviously prior to try and get as much air out of the system, then run it while it's, um, uh, once you've, and then, oh, sorry, <laughs> run it, once it starts bobbling or the fluid starts coming out, put the cap on, get it warm, turn it off, leave it for a while, and then do the same thing again by just topping it up, because it should hopefully have it all out by then. But just before I do put it back together, so all the levels are done, um, coolant's done now, uh, oil's done. I gotta check to see if obviously it goes into gear and it moves nicely. So that is what I'm gonna try now. And then I'm gonna put it back together and take it for MOT. So let's check this out. Oh, it feels odd because I'm not sat in my normal position. Found what my seat on. Okay. That ain't good. So guys, for every single one of you that is literally followed and saw that last clip, do not panic, you've done absolutely everything correctly. What has happened there with mine is as I've got 14 inch eight hangers and two inch extra risers, I've had to go out and buy custom cables. So throttle cables, clutch cables, and front brake hose. So my cable for the clutch Basically, the free play was too long. So when I measured it, the free play was three and a quarter inches there. The standard one from doing my research is two and three quarter inches long. So basically I had half an inch extra. And with the clutch being uprated, thicker springs and everything, it was just always engaging. So I've had to basically send it back to Ben Hill, who are absolutely fantastic by the way, I'd recommend them and they have cut it shorter to two and three quarter inches. So they've cut that extra half inch out. So I've now put it on and it is fine, which I'll show you in just a second. However, it still is at nearly full extension. So here, down here and here, but it is working and it is working with the clutch. So if you have followed this video so far, fantastic. You will be absolutely fine. It's just like I said, because of my setup. So, just to prove that I am right. I'll never get bored of that knob. Like I said guys, do not panic, you've done absolutely everything correct. It is now working, it took me a while to figure this out, but um, I knew it wasn't a clutch, I knew I'd done everything correctly, so, like I followed everything on there, so I knew it wasn't that, so it had to be something else. And then after obviously doing my research with the cable, because like I say, they're custom cables, it had to be that, and which I'd say I was correct. Which took about, I sent it off and I got it back by, literally the following day, so, um, it took me about three days, so that's three days from that point. So like I say, if you followed me so far guys, well done, fantastic, your bike should be running as a normal. So now thankfully, it is MOT time. You're all probably gonna think I'm sad as well, but I had to do this as well. <laughs> so here we go, first ride. Still can't believe it, I really can't. Feels absolutely amazing, I must admit, it's going to take a bit of getting used to with these eight pangers, but she does sound amazing. She really does. Oh, love it. The 
noise of her is just incredible. Oh, oh yeah, absolutely love it. Like I say, finally, we are out and about. Oh. Like I say, the clutch is 10 times better. Just the feel of it is incredible. It just snaps. There's no sort of like um, drag or anything, no slippage. It's been adjusted fully correctly. And yeah, oh. It is so, this seat as well is just so comfortable. So like, if you guys are looking to do a bobber VN or even any form of bobber, go check out blue color bobbers in the US. Because I tell you what, this seat is amazing. The bike, just generally, is very comfortable, even with these 14 inch eight pangers and the two inch risers. It's absolutely phenomenal, it really is. I absolutely love it. Like I say, I've had a few cruisers, and uh, like I say, this is, I've never had one with obviously bars this tall before, but yeah, it feels absolutely crazy and amazing. Oh, I'll give it a bit of a blip. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, bud. Oh, I love it. Absolutely love this. Love it. Absolutely love it. Oh, it's just so comfortable as well, like side to side. I'm actually glad that I stuck with the 180 tyre because if I actually had the, the 230, I think it would have been a little bit less harder to handle. Not by much, but like I say, it was made to have this one on and it just, it does just feel absolutely incredible. It really does. Oh, yeah. It feels so good to be back on a bike again. It has been probably about two years, two and a half years since I had a motorbike, because obviously buying the house. And this is just phenomenal. The pickup's really good. I see what people go on about now by having the Baron pulley and yeah absolutely brilliant so we're just coming up to the MOT station let's see what they say so guys there we go she's now parked up ready for MOT luckily there's a little uh, cafe around the corner so I'm gonna go there and have a cup of coffee and fingers crossed fingers crossed she passes her MOT well guys that's absolutely amazing she has passed her MOT the only thing that actually came up on the advisory was it said slight pitted on the rear hand uh, rear handbrake the rear foot brake um but yeah I don't care absolutely fantastic I look at it it's not that bad at all so if that's all it is and to be fair with everything I had done I was kind of hoping there shouldn't be anything because everything's pretty much been changed so here she is all sat ready and waiting to go home like i say now we're gonna go home i've got to stop off somewhere on the way but let's just go out and enjoy the ride <laughs> i'm so happy there is midnight oh she rode absolutely fantastically i've got a massive smile on my face and like i say it just it just makes me speechless because like i was on my previous video by just finishing the bike and actually going out and riding it and it's passed its mot on a very small advisory it's oh i just love cruisers i think they are absolutely amazing bikes i couldn't go to a sports bike these just feel 10 times better to me personally so if you have actually followed this video then now you will see how easy it is to change the clutch the only thing that is not difficult but a bit more of a pain if anything is just adjusting the actual clutch cable itself in my case anyway because i've obviously got extended um, cables but like i say if you follow that you shouldn't have a problem i hope this video has been informative you've got some enjoyment out of it and obviously it has helped you in one way or another so guys, that brings us to the end of the video and unfortunately it does bring us to the end of Project Midnight because she is now finished, there's nothing more I can do. So now I've got to try and find another project which I don't know what it's going to be or when it's going to be, that's the thing. So stay tuned guys, stick with the channel and like I say, hit like, 
hit subscribe to keep up with more future content and I'll see you on the next one guys. Take care, stay safe, ta-da.